Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start. Um, let's see. Uh, where am I here? Okay, first, hi. Uh, my name is Wes Speak. I'm uh, president of the Corona Historic Preservation Society. Very pleased uh, that you all could join us for a very um, unique look at uh, at Corona. Um, you know, I think frequently we see pictures of old Corona. Um, you know, that still frame. You really can't see depth and and liveliness um, and and infrequently we can't see anything that's that's color um, you know Tom found uh, uh, this video that was that was um, recently digitized by the state state library Tom it was the state library state library uh, that was provided by the 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 corona public library for digitization and it's really a uh, an amazing look um, at what life looked like in 1949 Corona and, and trying to find out a little bit about who shot this. It was donated by a Harold Rawson. Uh, Harold Rawson owned, uh, co-owned a Pontiac dealership and you're gonna see a little picture of his dealership uh, that was on 7th and Washburn a little bit later. Um, but he donated this and, and it's interesting the way it was donated was in one big chunk. Um, and it really didn't make any sense until you kind of figured it out what he was trying to do. And I think in the beginning, it looked like he wanted to use this almost as a promotional tool because his dealership, the uh, the Brady, um, the Brady Ross and Pontiac dealership, a couple more people to admit here, um, the Brady Ross and Pontiac dealership opened up in uh, May of that year. Um, so it, it this was the way I think of him trying to to do some promotion and figure out ways to do things. And I, you know, we truly don't know whether or not this was, you know, put anywhere else, but um, I, I want to thank him. I want to thank his family. Uh, I talked to uh, Randy Rawson la last night. This was uh, Harold Rawson was his great uncle, oh, his father's brother. Um, and I'm going to mute. So anybody that's, I guess I didn't cover the zoom, um, the zoom protocols here. Um, I'm going to be probably muting everybody but Tom and I, uh, but if you come in late or, or you happen to unmute, just, you know, if you can mute for me because we're just going to try and keep the, the noise down. If you do have a question um, or uh, a comment, you can make it in the, um, in the chat feature. It's at the bottom there of your screen. It'll say chat. You just type it right in and we'll have a couple people monitoring that uh, for questions. Um, the total video is about 27 minutes long. We'll maybe stop it a couple times here and there just to point some things out. Um, uh, Tom and I have run through it at least once, maybe twice, <laughs> but we've both seen this video. I can't tell you how many times. Uh, and and it, it's interesting because we, you know, even last night after I've seen the video 10 times, I'm still finding things where I go, oh my gosh, I didn't see that. Um, so uh, with that, we'll get started. Tom, do you have anything you want to add? Just uh, Jennifer Marlott at the library, she applied for the grant so this video could get, or these old films could be digitized, and she went above and beyond getting the funding for it, and it was her efforts that made this possible, so just wanted to point that out, but thank you, Wes. Thank you, and and, and again, I, I, I'm going to say this at the end, too, but I want to thank Tom for sharing history. Um when you find little nuggets like this, Tom is, is uh, always one of those people that, that shares freely. Um, he wants people to enjoy and experience Corona and, and uh, because it should be, history should be shared. And um, as we share things, we improve upon them. I, you know, I've found things that, you know, I've, I've uh, vetted with Tom and other folks and, and I've either found things that I, I didn't know or um, maybe it incorrectly looked at. So sharing, sharing is caring, right? That's what my mom told me. So with that, we'll get started here. If I can get my mouse over there. So that's looking looking uh, north. This is looking east on 6th Street. The Corona Theater you see on the left. If you pause it, Wes, we could talk about that real quick. Sure. Or back it up to the, to the north north street view okay yeah so uh you there's some things there that you can see you can see beacon hill in the background that hasn't moved and it's one of the few 
pictures that you see of Corona where there's no 91 freeway in the background nowadays. And then if you, uh, if you look off to the left, you'll see a Texaco gas station as it looked in the 40s. Well, I guess the star insignia, but it really is a cool picture of what our downtown used to look like. And on the right, you see the, the EM of Emerson, of Emerson's menwear on the right there. And pause it here, if you will. Yeah. So um, what's really cool about this is if you drive down 6th Street now, it's much wider. And how we know that is if you look to the left where the theater is, when it was originally built, it had an overhang from the sidewalk. And you still see that overhang. And the uh, a lot of people don't know this. The, our theater, the Corona Theater, has a sister theater that is still standing. And it's in Fontana. So the... The same owner of the Corona Theater, when the Women's Improvement Club of Fontana visited, he was so impressed with them. He went and built a theater in uh, Fontana and it's still standing to this day as well. So they're kind of sister theaters. There's the uh, Corona High School built 1923. You see the, basically it looks exactly the same except for the flagpole that you see here is, is no longer there anymore. And then to point out, G. Stanley Wilson was the architect. And that man was amazing. His buildings are phenomenal and still stand to this day. And then City Hall, uh, Corona's first architect was Leo Cronin, or Cronin, sorry, Patty. And uh, he designed this city hall and he, uh, he meant to design it to complement the library to the right of it that we don't see, but they're both designed in that classic style. And I, I know Wes is gonna point out the siren on the roof, but there was a second siren that was much smaller that they used during World War, War, World War II times. So the big siren was for emergencies, but the smaller siren was for air raids. And we don't see the small siren, but we have it. And um, I think the only other thing to point out there, other than it's a beautiful building, is as we <laughs> as we know, Ronald Reagan filmed Storm Warning in the city hall. So I think it's interesting. I've I've seen many pictures of the building, but I didn't realize it was that color. I was very unimpressed with the color. I thought I don't know why I thought it was. A brighter color but it looked very government building like I guess. You're gonna have to go with these people Wesley. Yeah city council people so that's um, uh, C.R. Miller yeah this is uh, R.J. Steiner or, I'm sorry uh, uh, Mr. Schmidt and uh, let me go back I'll kind of skip that really fast. So this First guy is, I, I'm pretty sure this is uh, Mayor C.R. Miller. Um, the next gentleman with the glasses is uh, Mr. Coburn, a very serious looking guy. Um, and then Edward Paul, uh, Leonard Schmidt. He was kind of known as a pugilistic kind of guy, very um, uh, loud and boisterous. This one was a reporter for The Independent. I don't have her name. And that is um, R.J. Steiner no relation to our, our current uh, Mr. Steiner. Let me pause here for a second. I think what was interesting about this, this video here that shows the fire department, fire department was housed at City Hall uh, and, and went on to 8th Street, but this exact fire engine here is the, um, uh, is the same fire engine that our CFA folks uh, drive around right now. So Not the same model, but the exact same engine. You can see it in all the parades. And how cool is it that you could hang on to the back of a fire truck back in the day? I, I think they need to bring that back. And that's um, Don Bortry, who was the fire chief, uh, Marsha Glenn Hart. Um, this, in, this picture here, let me go back real quick. I went a little faster than I thought. 
So that is uh, Chief Don Borcher and, and Fred, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, and Marshall Glenhart. Now, it was interesting about this year was that they, um, this is they actually hired two full-time fire engineers, and those are the guys that were driving the trucks. And that was uh, Jack Michaels and uh, Charles Scott. And the, what the interesting part about the, there was a newspaper article that I found about Charles Scott, which I think he's this guy, right? He's the guy in the, on the left there, or on the right. He, um, or no, sorry, the left. He was a janitor. They actually had the, they had, he was a part-time janitor. He worked as a janitor um, and they had to, you know, that was one of the discussions. Well, boy, if they brought this guy on as an engineer, they were going to have to hire a janitor because he couldn't do both. And what I liked about this shot was um, literally Main Street looks exactly the same. <laughs> Those houses. Go ahead. Nothing's changed. It, we, Wes and I were watching this and we pulled up Google Earth and nothing has changed other than the trees are taller and the, the light bulb is missing now. So yeah, I'll, I'll pause it there in a second. You can kind of see and I brought up. Uh, um, so the, the, the key to thing to focus on here is that point. Um, on that wall there. So I'm going to see if I can, if I could share my other screen. So if you see here, I'm going to back up here a little bit. Sorry, I didn't have that set up right. That is exactly the same. This wall is, is different. Uh, this wall was added, of course, but that point that you can see there is still there and the, and the uh, light pole was here. And the only thing missing, those palm trees are, they're quite a bit taller, <laughs> uh, but these houses are exactly the same. Okay, back to the video here. They got mowing the lawn, but you see that point in the wall there. What's interesting about this was a 16th annual water carnival that was put on by uh, Nettie Whitcomb uh, at the plunge. It's had 500 people in attendance. That's Nettie, that great bathing suit. Um, she was very proud of the, of the plunge. In fact, she put this carnival on to show how well that she could teach people how to swim in a short amount of time. You gotta love the bathing suits. And again, the, the, I like that they don't call it city pool, they call it municipal plunge. So they added some class to it. But it was uh, Corona's first architect, Leo Cronin, that designed the plunge as well. And when you look at the blueprints, it had an incredible amount of dressing rooms so he really put some thought into how this pool was designed or this plunge was designed. So this was the, the festival of flags. So they had, they could go out and demonstrate how well that they, had, they could swim with these flags. And that's uh, Robert Gross carrying the American flag. That was the wave pool edition. <laughs> They, uh, they actually sold tickets. There was two ticket takers that took tickets to this thing. And I think he said them. it was 500 people that attended this, Wes. Is that right? Yeah, 500. What did you call this, Tom? The floating part? <laughs> <laughs> floating class. <laughs> they, they had all levels at, at the plunge, all levels of experience. Yeah, and then even they had it one, uh, in the article that we found about this uh, carnival, um, they had three-year-olds that were demonstrating they, they learned how to swim in the, the three months that they were at the plunge. 
did a rescue demonstration where they were had people, and then they had these uh, water clowns. They called them. Called them. Those were played by Robert Gross, Bob Allen, and his brother Norm Allen. Uh, and they learned how to defy gravity. <laughs> And how cool is it there's a, there's a flag at the top of the diving board? Who yeah, does that? Last time. See, I don't know. When I was a kid, that was just called horsing around. We didn't, you know, we got in trouble for that. These guys are getting celebrated and put on, on film, color film forever. This Hispanic kid gets into the, into the mix here, has a good time, Some expert diving. Work more horseplay. They had events called uh, that were square dancing in the pool, though there isn't any film of that. Um, and uh, sorry, back there. And I, I think to put it in perspective is nowadays we have so many forms of entertainment, but in those days, 1949, the municipal plunge in the movie theater were big. They were huge. And so to, to have our city have 500 people hanging out at the municipal plunge and, and just really taking advantage of the, of the pool provided such a great sense of community. Oh, you did leave it in there. So these, these people are coming out of the packing house, and it's great. It, it, well, one, it's just cool to see how humble and how great the Coronans of yesterday are, but I swear some of them are bringing out oranges with them. I they are at the end. Oh, there's yeah. one. <laughs> well, the cool thing about that building, it's still standing. It's at uh, Harrison and the railroad tracks. Uh, it's now housing the uh, Lucas Oil Company. And uh, even the, that packing house is like the second or third packing house built at that location. But Corona's very first packing house, which was funded by uh, Gerritsen, was uh, through his company, was built at that location. So it's cool that a packing house still stands there. The good old Corona Independent. You know, I remember a, a growing up as a kid, you know, here in Corona and seeing that building and I threw papers, uh, didn't remember it like this, but uh, I think that's the, that's the publisher and editor, either Justin or, uh, or Jack uh, Hammond. They're typesetters, or I'm sorry, uh, secretary, this is our reporter from earlier that we saw, didn't recognize until like the third time I watched this. And there, there she is being micromanaged. <laughs> and how cool is the visor that this dude is wearing? That's, uh, that was uh, what Tom and I are assuming is the teletype, how they got their news. Thomas wants to know where those files are so we can go through them. There's a wealth of information in them. <laughs> And I think our favorite guy was coming up, the dude wearing the apron. He just, yeah. he's totally legit. And another, another one of those looks like, what the hell are you doing? And get out of my way here. This guy. There he is. He is, this is the man. He is not afraid to get dirty. No. Nope. So we figured out based on, uh, and this is amazing looking to see how they did the newspapers back in that day, actually loaded in, you know, uh, piece by piece. Um, and it was, uh, we looking at this newspaper, we figured out this newspaper is August 23rd, 1949. The Dow Jones closed at 178 that day. There it is. Good old KBUC, 1949. 
I, I didn't understand why he spent so much time here, but I did find out that KBUC actually started in 1948, which is probably why, because it was kind of a new thing. Um, on uh, and this is this was shot in the same time, uh, August 23rd. Uh, it was the Blue Baron. The shows were the Blue Baron Club Corona, which was like a music show. Party Time, which was uh, another music show. Harmony Ranch, which was a um, a country western. Uh, where they played country western music, a lot of Gene Autry. Um, it uh, later became WKWRM, The Worm, which I, well, I remember it as. Did sports uh, shows, and then uh, Radio Mexico. Um, but its uh, tower officially came down. If you didn't notice, it was at the corner of uh, the 91 freeway and the 15. It officially came down uh, April 14th of 2020. Um, and uh, it's the act of the license is still active. However, it is noted to be silent and it was bought by a, a Chinese firm. I'm guessing this is Harmony Ranch here. And somewhere out there that microphone still exists. We just have to find it. This is a, uh, oh, go ahead, Tom. No, go ahead, Wes. Is, uh, you hey, go, hey, you uh, Army National Guard. Uh, company 224, or sorry, uh, uh, 224, Company F, they were invited by the city when the city decided it was going to build an armory. So when the city said, hey, we'll, we'll take an armory and we'll take a company of men, they said, great, we'll send them over right now. Well, they didn't have any place to put them. So this is being shot at um, the Jameson Post on Main Street. And uh, they did demonstrations and training every Wednesday night. Um, and that Tom and neither Tom or I could find any reports of, of mortars being launched in <laughs> somewhere downtown in 1949. So do you think these went off this way? And uh, they did equipment demonstrations. They used this as a recruiting tool. Um, this, this one I thought was pretty funny, but. The bazooka coming up is really good. Or this is the bazooka, yeah. but it, it's very important to practice shooting a bazooka inside a building. <laughs> and it, this is at the Jameson Post so right. if, if you're a nerd and you start looking at the backgrounds you'll start to see some features of the Jameson Post that are still there today um, the bookshelves, the fireplace I love the torches or the, the lights on the side, that's outside, they're doing drills outside but that's pretty amazing I know that's inside, shoot you're right Tom but the uh, the lighting is really amazing. And uh, this company, they came from Arlington. Um, Arlington had still had their active post there. Their, you know, that was a big post in World War II. Um, that's where everybody, you know, kind of left the West Coast to go uh, to go off to war, but they it was still very active. It tells you how big, how big the the um, Jameson post was inside. These guys are doing drills inside. You see the bookcase there? A the twin of that bookcase is on the other side. They obviously took it out at some point, but that, that bookcase is exactly the same on the other side. I guess no one knows how to shovel, but <laughs> that's the fireplace. And that fireplace is still there. It's, it's so grand. That is Captain Higpeth. He was the uh, commander of that group. I just love the outfits and we're so proud of their babies. They see a guy with a camera and everybody runs up to show their kids in front of it. I mean, that wouldn't happen nowadays, but. And this is City Park. So if you look just 
just look at how the trees are so grown and it's so lush and such a thriving environment. And, and uh, I don't think we would dare put this water fountain at City Park nowadays. I haven't finished the research. Um, it's okay. You can move on. I like this. So I think uh, Shay, your your mom's on. She'll recognize that um, that van in the back. And basically, what it says is all American cleaners. Um, she had mentioned that her her family that was her family's business, and they sponsored quite a bit of um, uh, softball, baseball teams. But I, I just love this picture because it looks like a Norman Walkwell picture. You know the the fonts, the the dress, and uh, the guy announcing the game. Scorekeeper. Shot to the crowd. Very mixed crowd. The kid in the sailor hat photo bombs like three different locations. Yeah. I love the colorfulness of the dresses and the shirts and. I mean, this is a this is a pretty big crowd. I'm, mean, you know, if it, it's around the same time. It's a Thursday night. Yeah, the sailor kid is he's there. <laughs> we 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 need to find out who that guy was. And then um, this is the baseball team, right? I think yep. they're sponsored by. Uh, is it the Mava. Mava team? Yep. There's a Mava shirt right there on the back. And a lot of people don't know is uh, when Del Taco started, they were using Mava for their shakes and Del Taco was well known for the shakes, but it was really Mava that was the secret to their success on that. Like the umpire is wearing a tie, but look at these silk outfits. I mean, really cool looking soft girl softball silk outfits. Right. They're sponsored as well, but I, there isn't a great shot of the back of their uniform. So I tried to freeze frame it a couple times, but it's really hard to see. This is one of my favorites. So the girl from Jones Beach starring Virginia Mayo and Ronald Reagan. Um, that's how we figured out, narrowed this down. And there was August 23rd. I remember playing with that. And, then, and this is so great because we see in color what the theater looked like back in the day. The candy, um, candy shop and Ushers. Ticket taker. And how cool is that phone? I like that tie. I want that tie. And then the, the same chairs for the theater are still there. Those are the same, same seats as even if you go there today. So that, that movie played um, August 21st to August 24th. So I don't know what day of the week this is, but the place is packed. And, and if you look, it's, uh, you know, some people are enjoying the, the, uh, the attention. Other people are very much annoyed. <laughs> Ho hopefully they took these shots before the movie started, <laughs> not during. But again, a, a very, uh, the place is packed. It's a very mixed crowd. Everybody seems to be having a good time, except for the people that are annoyed by what the hell is this guy doing, shining a light in my face in the middle of a the movie theater. Kids sitting in the front. That guy's on a date. <laughs> but again the the swimming pool and the theater were your biggest forms of entertainment it was really it was something to go to the movie theater and even though it's not showing the inside 
kind of a broad view of this theater, it was painted and decorated kind of a Spanish Mediterranean style, but it was beautiful. It was almost like you were inside, but you felt like you were outside watching a movie. Sorry for the lag there, folks. Wes and I were talking yesterday at how many uh, redheads there are in these old films. There's, there's quite a few. I think, Tom, we were watching this yesterday, you made the remark, this looks like it could be Iowa. Yeah, and that's, and, the, and there's some wisdom to that. The, uh, the majority of, uh, or a lot of Corona settlers were from Iowa. And so uh, these would be their kids and grandkids. And so they kind of have that Iowa look to them. So, so this is, uh, this is our, our, our benefactor here, Brady, the Brady Ross and Pontiac dealership um, located at 7th and Washburn, basically where the library is now. There's our advertisement from May. And there's Mater. <laughs> they advertise themselves as they could, they were doing everything. This is the, the Corona had two actually, two Pontiac dealerships. This is the newest one, um, but they did everything. Uh, polishing, they took care of any car. They could work on any car. Um, and you see the Southern apartments there above on the left. I don't know why this is lagging so bad. There it is. He, he didn't stop at West. Oh, shoot, I missed it. Sorry. So, a color view of the Lord building. One of the least things I didn't see until I'd watched this for the eighth time. So, you think you're looking basically southeast and you see the Lord building there at the top. Wish, wish we still had that building. Yeah. And then here's an honest car, honest car salesman coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so I've asked uh, Mr. Rawson to see, I think he was going to have his dad um, watch today or at least watch a recording of this and try and figure out some of these people are but he definitely verified that uh, that one of those guys is not his his great uncle but it was Clarence that's one of the people we can see on his uh, he was obviously the car washer and if you recognize one of those guys in the very is uh, that guy is on the uh, is also a volunteer in the police department or the fire department because he was the same guy that had the, the patch. Here's the, the sales pitch. I left this in just because I think it's kind of cute. I mean, I think this was their, she's probably a relative. Um, we, were, we were thinking it's his daughter or niece. <laughs> yeah. He is going to sell this car to her. <laughs> so if you remember that there was a, a quick clip of a woman driving up Main Street and getting out and, you know, we stopped. The same lady, same car. So um, she's, she's already hooked taking it in to close the deal. And now sign your life away. In pencil, apparently. The happiest customer of the Brady Ross and Pontiac dealership. 
And for those of you that have bought a car recently, you all know that it's less than 10 minutes to, <laughs> to in and out. That's why the Brady Ross and Pontiac dealership was successful because they could keep people out of there in four seconds. Sorry about that. And this was the meat, the citrus industry. This is the meat and potatoes of our city. This is the, this is what fueled our economy was the citrus. And so this is really cool to see the inner workings of it going on. I, I think what's one thing is really amazing, even though this building is no longer standing. And Tom, you pointed out yesterday that Packing houses were built. They were built to last. I mean, you, that's why you have those packing houses in Riverside that are still there. You know, where the Lucas building is now is, is still around. And we, we went into the architecture of them. That they, they raised to a point to let the heat out. And they have windows at the top to let the light in. And uh, the big thing with packing houses back in the day was automation. So the faster that you could process fruit, just meant so much more money. So the packing houses were always, always automating. And, and you see it here. You, you can see their equipment. They're very proud of their equipment. And then um, one thing that we need to do the research on is uh, the exchange, the lemon exchange, citrus exchange, they, uh, they had a lab, they were always inventing. So it looks like here they're doing some probably frozen orange juice, I'm guessing, or some sort of canning. But how much of a improvements that we still use, such as concentrated orange juice and pectin and whatnot are, were invented here in Corona. So we need to do the research, but I would imagine there's probably some forgotten history that we need to dig up. And then you have a whole automated system there. No more crates. Everything's going in boxes. You see the train going by. Yeah. So we're we're past the days of the citrus labels. Unfortunately, those got retired or were retired. What I noticed in this is all the guys coming out of there, the older gentlemen all wearing hats, every single one of them. And smoking. You you wouldn't dare try to do this nowadays, but back in those times, that was the norm. And just just look how humble these guys are. They they just finished a full day's work, or they're going out to lunch, but they just come out happy and humble, and they put in a hard day's work, and we're seeing it. And on all ages, you see younger guys, you see guys look like they're in their sixties, and it's just. It's good family men and women. It really paints a, a good picture of Corona back in the day. You have, you have all races, you have all ages, you have female and male, and it, it just, it's, a, it's true community, old and young. It, it's kind of special to watch. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to trim that out. And uh, this church here, it, it got its roots with R.B. Taylor, and the founder R.B. Taylor, and it's grown over the years. And if you don't know what this church is now, it's a uh, crossroads. So, and then the Methodist Church, it's this building is still standing, although modified. But look how beautiful it was back then, and color video of the Catholic Church, St. Edward's. It's, um, I think it was six and Merrill, six and, oh, was it six and Merrill? Yeah. 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 And unfortunately, they've taken that top layer of rock, of stones off, but what a beautiful video of a church. And then this one, uh, I think everybody's seen this, the, uh, the stairs used to go all the way straight down to the street, <laughs> but they, they did get modified and turned left and right. Everybody and, wearing their Sunday vest? 
Yeah. And it goes back to your sense of community. You know, people, people were thriving. They were working. They were, they knew each other. It was, I saw someone posted in the comments that in 1954, it was 22,000. So you're looking at a city of 20,000. And it, it was a, it was small town and it was everybody knows everybody. I swear if you go and you stand on those stairs right now, they look exactly the same. And the, this church, the first congregational church, they were the first ones to build the church in Corona. And uh, oh, Janice updated 13,000 in 1960. But uh, this is the second church for the first congregationalists, but, but they were the first ones to build the church, Corona. And how great would it be to know who all these people are? The original church uh, burnt down, what, 1911, Tom? No, that was the Baptist. Is this the Baptist oh. church? Or no. This, this... Uh, I think I might have switched. Yeah, this is the Baptist church. Shoot, sorry. It's all good. Um, oh. That's it. Um, thank you, like I said, Harold Rawson, the public library, and Councilmember Richens for sharing Corona history. Um, and I uh, want to thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, for watching with us and hearing Tom and I be geeks together and geek out on a little video. Um, and if you aren't a member and a, a paying member of the uh, Corona Historic Preservation Society, you can go at, uh, go to www.coronahistory.org for uh, details. It's uh, 30 bucks a year. Uh, you get six really great, well-produced um, newsletters, always uh, good information, fun stuff. Uh, last month, um, our own Shea Cortez wrote a, a wonderful story about Mary Alice Sutter, basically the, the first um, uh, female judge in, in, uh, in Riverside County. And, and those of you who didn't have a chance to read that, you know, the, you know, let me know, I can get you a copy, but better to, to join it. And, but we'd love to see you. And we're gonna try and do another one of these um, in a few months. I just have to figure out what the topic's gonna be, but let's see, did we have any questions? If you look at the, at the question chat box, Tom, uh, let's take a look. Uh, Tom did a really good job. Wes could use some improvement. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> let's see what else. Okay. See, somebody said smog. Yes, there was a little bit of smog. Um, RJ Steiner, he was uh, a council member. When that ball gets hit, you guys know yeah, Turner, the, the city hall building no is no longer standing. Unfortunately, it's it's right where um, it would be at the corner of Eighth and Main, kind of where oh, the oh, oh, press center or the uh, uh, the. Uh, <laughs> somebody that's on. You can mute yourselves. There we go. I'm gonna mute there. Um. And Janice, you answered that. Thanks. Nice job. 1949. That's, yeah, 1949. This is a splash pad. Uh, let's see. 10,000 people in 1950. Thank you, Janice. Um, let's see. Yeah, 1966. I, I'd love to. If, if anybody has a video from any other time frames that show Corona. In fact, that's one of the things I, I, I posted about this a while ago and, the, and Tom, Tom mentions this too quite a bit. Um, there are probably thousands of, of pictures and, and video that are sitting in people's um, attics and grandparents' attics that show Corona. And, and you know, thank God for, for Harold Rawson for donating this to the library at some point. We don't have a donation date, but um, uh, this stuff is great because otherwise, you know, I, you get to see things from a different angle. You get to see more detail. It frankly tells a story, a real story, you know, better than a picture. Seeing, um, you know, all all the, the the varied members of Corona Society all together, um, and and you know, in those common places that Tom talked about, the city park, the pool, and uh, and the theater. Uh, yes, we'll be available for replay. Yeah, we are recording it, and we'll put it on our on our YouTube page. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. Anybody, any other questions for us? Just wanted to say great job. Yeah, that was really Really great. interesting. I oh, really enjoyed you. it. Thank you guys for putting that together. Thank you. Well, thank Tom for sharing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have never seen it. Yeah, that's great. The Baptist Church burned down in 1937. 37. Okay. Yeah, so, so the, the, the video was a little bit cut up. I think I might have, I, I was monkeying with it last night trying to get in there because there was a, there was a, a whole section of churches that was about 20 minutes long and and they just sat outside and just filmed people coming out my gosh it took forever people love i mean people love to go to church in corona they, they did then too um but uh i i screwed up and i i cut out the beginning of the the baptist church and well i can tell you it looks pretty much the same there are some changes but but for the most part it's it looks the same as it did in 1949 Yeah. There's a um, good question. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, who Phantom has his hand up? Oh. Yes. Yes. Who? I will unmute you. Can you Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, question is: uh, I ran into a couple of uh, people are, are, that said that they lived here in Corona all their life. They're Latinos. I was just wondering if you would do something similar for like Cinco de Mayo, uh, how the Latino community is a big, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, Dan, I, I would love to. Um, and if there's any of those folks that have uh, pictures or video, my gosh, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, you, yeah. Po post it on, yeah, post it and I'll send it out to the people that, that I met. I met them at Eastvale at the car show down there a couple of days ago. Okay. And they were telling me stories from back in the day. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of them now. All I know is one guy's name is Pete Medina and the other guy was named Robert. Okay. And they were just telling me a lot of stories from back in the day. They, they all think I'm rich because I live in Eagle Glen. <laughs> <laughs> but you are. <laughs> I think hey, Dan appreciates that. When I told them, when I told them I, I lived in Dana Point, raised my family. They, was, they thought I was a millionaire. <laughs> but anyway, they they told they said they would wake up in the morning and smell oranges. Yeah. They live in the in the circle. They live in the circle. Yeah. So, anyways, I mean, I, all right, Russ. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. Bye. -bye. So I, I, you know, I, I moved here in 1980. Janice, you've been here longer than I have too. But I've been I mean, here that's, since 1959. That's, that's something that you, I mean, I grew up with. My my house was near the corner of um, Maine and Ontario, and I could look out my back window, my room, and and see, you know, the sea of orange groves, and that smell was just Amazing. overwhelming. So yeah, thanks for that, Dan. I appreciate it. And there, just to mention, the Hispanic history in Corona is immense. There is so much of it. If you, you can start studying and just wrap yourself for hours in it, just follow Frances Martinez and everything that she did back in the day. And, um, probably one of my favorite stories, and we're still trying, I'm convinced someday we're going to find this, but uh, John Wayne's son-in-law grew up in Corona. And uh, so and he was Hispanic and he married John Wayne's daughter. Well, obviously, but John Wayne would come to Corona for the holidays because he just loved the Hispanic um, cooking. And he was known for um, going out to the bars on Main Street and 6th Street and buying rounds for everybody. But, but he loved the Hispanic community of, of Corona. And then there's just the, all the work that they did on the citrus, all of the the efforts that they did, you can get into the segregation and racism and how we've learned from it. There's a, the Hispanics are thriving today and, and how far our city is integrated and become beautiful. And if you, you don't know your future until you learn your history. And so it's very important to document it. And if it's, a, I really, and I know West feels the same way, that the Hispanic history is so valuable to our city so yeah we're looking forward to and over the next year or so um 
you know, Tom and I are going to be uh, chairing a, a, a group that we're going to be looking at, at uh, all of our history. And uh, one of the things that we saw that Riverside did a few years ago was they did a, um, a Hispanic heritage uh, context report, which was about 300 pages and showed kind of the history and, and the, the, the cultural significance. And, and frankly, I think Corona has, if not deeper uh, uh, roots. So we're going to looking forward to diving into that and in over the next couple of years and um, but yeah, the, I saw a couple of people that had mentioned that they have some, you know, other video. Um, boy, I, I'd love to see it. And in fact, we'd love to do the same thing again. And thanks, Dan. It's a great, a great option. Maybe we'll put it out there that people have, um, have a film, you know, earlier, the better of, of Cinco de Mayo and things that really show Corona life. And, and that's what I think I really loved about this video was that it showed this, you know, when we cut it down a little bit, you know, we, we took out a few things. There was um, uh, a piece in there about a, a, a milling company, but you know it's not there anymore. And um, and I'm not a big fan of, of uh, highlighting things that just aren't there, even though even though they're you know some of them are amazing. But um, but uh, yeah, uh, so if anybody has anything like that, or you know of um, older folks in town that have been here a long time, please ask them to donate to the library. Um, the the Colonel Hawk Historic Preservation Society. We don't have a museum. We 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 don't um, uh, uh, want to get things from people. We really want that to go to the library so it's preserved and celebrated and um, and preserved forever. So uh, I think that's all I got for right now. I don't see any other new questions. Tommy, anything else? I just, uh, it's good to see old friends on this feed, uh, some I haven't seen in a while, and I just want to thank everybody for taking a part of their day of a Saturday to come and watch this presentation and valuing the history, and uh, it means a lot to me and Wes and all you history nerds that are like us, <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody, and uh, we are recording this, so we will... Um... Uh, this will be posted probably on the CHPS's YouTube page. We'll try and figure out how we can share it on Facebook. But uh, thank you again. Thank you all for, for joining. And we'll see you at the next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.